thousands of years, the glaciers of Bolivia have been considered sacred. Their snow-peaked summits rising toward the sky, reaching toward the sun. They provide some of the world's most breathtaking scenery. And something even more precious, water, vital to the millions of people in the valleys and cities below. But all that is changing, and the consequences are devastating, says South America's leading glaciologist, Edson Ramirez. It's very sad to, to find that the glaciers are actually disappearing. It's very dramatic, very, very dramatic. To show just how dramatic the loss, he takes us here, nearly 5,300 meters high, to the summit of Bolivia's Chacaltaya Glacier. Just a decade ago, this glacier was the highest ski run in the world. But today, this is all that is left. According to Ramirez, the snow and ice covering the glacier has shrunk a startling 90% since 1940. What's more, he warns, the pace is quickening. In the case of Chacaltaya, it was melting in the last 30 years, three times faster compared to other years before. The glacier is dead. Chacaltaya, it's dead. And the scientific community fears that other glaciers around the world will share the same fate. Neighboring glaciers in the Andes are already melting at rates surprising even the experts. Many, says Ramirez, will disappear within 40 years. The key reasons, global warming due to a dangerous increase in carbon emissions. Also, an increase in a climate change phenomenon known as El Nino, which causes less snowfall over the mountains, more direct sunlight and more rapid melting. If the people not react now, in the next years, it will be too late. So we don't have a lot of time. But for the tens of thousands of people who rely on water from glacial lakes and streams for their livelihood, it may already be too late. <laughs> people like 70-year-old Felicia Garcia, who lives here in Amachuma Chico, a farming community nestled in the valley of one of Bolivia's remaining glaciers. The ice is melting because the sun is too hot. Our water is drying up. We don't have it for our fields, and at times not even to drink. The effect on crops here and in other agricultural communities like it is enormous. It's full of worms. Like most of those in her village, her family's entire income came from selling their harvest. Now there's barely enough to feed them. They fear soon they will have no food left at all. The harvest is only half of what it was before. Maybe it's the end of the world. God gave us everything. He can also take it away. The water, everything. Already, the community that she has always known is disappearing. The men, including her elderly husband, forced to leave in search of jobs leaving women like her alone to try to keep their farms alive, tend to whatever livestock remains, and raise their families. Yes, we have been left alone, but what are we to do? Felicia's neighbor, Innocencia, is raising seven children, working up to five hours a day in the field since her husband left to work as a miner. With her taps now mostly dry, they are forced to find water wherever they can, no matter how difficult getting there may be, or what they find once there. Agua sucia, vene. 
Toiling alongside her are her daughters. No. With so many men gone, too many girls now have no option but to drop out of school. Seeing these changes have been devastating, says village leader Felix Kispe. His family worked this land for generations. These are photos from when I was little. This little one is my niece, my mom, me. When I was a child, my only dream was to be a farmer, to have a good life here. But that dream has died. Here there is nothing. Totally dry. Dry. It is very sad. Many people have left. Houses are abandoned. Some don't even have roofs. This hurts me a lot. It affects me very much. Husbands only come home maybe twice a month. It would be great to live like before and not be heartbroken every day. Felix himself has been forced to leave behind the life he loves to sell toilet paper and clean windows. He joins so many others forced to migrate here to the adjoining cities of La Paz and El Alto. But for him and the city's now nearly two million inhabitants, time may also be running out. Their water supply is running low. This is the reservoir that provides water to one of the main cities in Bolivia. With some 20% of the reservoir's water supply coming from glaciers, many climate change experts like Jose Gutierrez are very worried. What will the world do when two million of people will not have water for drinking? And water is also needed to generate an estimated 90% of the city's electricity. The world needs to know what is happening in Bolivia. We are losing something that is a human right, a source of life. Water for drinking, for food, for the animals, for electricity. They don't have future. We do not have a future. And they will not, he says, until countries around the world agree to reduce their carbon emissions and protect those who for now are left with an uncertain future and memories of a once happy past. <laughs>